This is Covering the Spread, part of the FanDuel Podcast Network. We are already entering week number nine in the NFL, which feels pretty wild to say. And that's uh, that's sad because it means we're already almost halfway done at the season. But I think entering week nine, some pretty good numbers to bet and some fun teams to bet on that I feel pretty excited about for this week. We'll break down which ones those are, where I'm seeing value across week nine. Also take a look at game number three in the World Series for today. Welcome on into Covering the Spread. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire.com here to take a look at week number nine of the NFL and also break down World Series game number three flying solo for today to break down all of those. We'll have college football coming tomorrow with Ed Fang. We'll have our NFL week nine full preview coming up Thursday with Ryan Williams and our player prop breakdown with JJ Zacharyson coming up on Friday. So a lot of good stuff and a lot of good guests across the week here on Covering the Spread. Before we dive into all that, though, a reminder to make sure you are subscribed to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts. We, of course, are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, you name it. You can find us there. And while you're there, if you like what you hear, leave us a rating and review as well also over on the FanDuel YouTube page after the fact as always NBA season is underway now is the perfect time to download FanDuel America's number one sports book because right now new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 that's up to $1,000 back in free bets if your first bet doesn't win FanDuel has all your favorite bets from the money line to point spread to player props you can even combine your bets for a chance at a bigger payout with a same game parlay Plus, with live betting, you'll get updated odds on games that have already started. FanDuel Sportsbook app is safe, secure, and super easy to use. So download FanDuel today to get your no-sweat first bet up to $1,000. Make every moment more this season with FanDuel, official sportsbook partner of the NBA. Must be 21 plus and in select states. First online real money wager only. Refund issued is non-withdrawable free bets that expire in 14 days. Restrictions apply. See terms at sportsbook.com. FanDuel.com. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 53342. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WIT-IT. In Kansas, 1-800-522-4700 or visit ksgamblinghelp.com. Louisiana, 1-877-770-STOP. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. In Tennessee, call the red line at 1-800-889-9789. In Wyoming, 1-800-522-4700 or in West Virginia, 1-800-GAMBLER.net. So rundown for today, we'll talk about week nine right now in the NFL. We'll go through World Series game three after that and then recap last week's show and break down what went well, what did not go well on last week's show. If you want to skip ahead to the World Series game three preview, if you are trying to bet that before uh, those games, uh, that game gets underway. There is a timestamp available in the description over on numberfire.com and the episode description wherever you get your podcasts. Let's zero in on NFL week number nine right now, though. And uh, like I said, some pretty fun teams to bet on here and some teams that I'm excited to bet against as well. The first one is one that I'm super into, and that's the Jags money line at plus 106 against the Raiders. I'm actually kind of surprised we didn't see a bigger reaction to the Raiders flop against the Saints last week. My model likes the Jags quite a bit. Uh, they are a team that are efficient on early downs, both on offense and on defense. That's a pretty big por- portion of my 2022 only model. And that's why that model likes them. I think that maybe what we're seeing here is a reaction to some of the rough throws that Trevor Lawrence has. You know, he's had great moments, but he's also had some bad moments. And we can have like this negative highlight bias in our minds. And maybe we're getting a bit of that with Lawrence here. And that's dragging the Jags down. My traditional model, the one that I like, has the Jags win odds at 55%. We're getting plus money here. So pretty good value there. And again, the 2022 only model is also higher on the Jags here. It kind of hates the Raiders, specifically their defense. So 
I feel good about betting on the Jags. I feel good betting against the Raiders here. This game is in Jacksonville, so I'll take the Jags money line at plus 106, my first bet of the week. The second one is one that I was pretty surprised by because my traditional model uh, has a super high prior on the Chargers. They were among the best teams in that model preseason. They were a team I wanted from a like an AFC West perspective, from an AFC perspective. And that prior is still in there. And it has been tweaked because Rashawn Slater's injury and Joey Bosa's injury. So the prior now is not as good as it was entering the year. But that prior is still in there. And it was still very high. But that model says I should take Atlanta on the money line plus 140 against the Chargers here. And I honestly don't disagree. The Chargers will not have Mike Williams here. They are coming off a bye, which helps. They should get Keenan Allen back to full health now. But this team can't afford to lose juice. They can't afford to lose big playability. And Mike Williams, despite not being like fast, has juice. He has a, that downfield ability that not a lot of guys in this offense have. This Falcons defense is hideous. They're really bad. They've got a lot of injuries in the secondary, uh, and they're 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 rough. But their offense is super efficient on early downs. I don't know how they're efficient, but but they are efficient. My traditional model says I should bet the Falcons as it has this game being a toss up. So plus one forty is good there. My twenty twenty two only model has the Falcons favored. I will caveat this by saying that I built that other model, the secondary model. Because I was annoyed last year with how often my number said to bet the Chargers. I thought it, that model was overrating them because they were this team that was inefficient in early downs. They'd rely on Justin Herbert's late down heroics to bail them out. So I was like, okay, I need to tweak some, some things to account for teams that are like this because it's not sustainable and the Chargers miss the playoffs. So I think that was, you know, indication that was the right way to go. So this model was built specifically to work against the Chargers. So it's not a shock that 2022 model says I should bet against them. But when you pair that with the traditional model, which has a very high prior on the Chargers saying to bet against them, I'm very okay going here. So the, the Falcons money line plus 140, a mighty fine way to go for me. The final one I'm locking in right now is the Colts plus five and a half. That's on the road against New England. And I thought Sam Ellinger played decently well in his first start. Uh, based on the opponent, when you adjust for the team they played, they exceeded expectations when throwing an early downs in that game. That's when they, they did not do with Matt Ryan. They were about 0.04 above average uh, with Sam Ellinger. They were minus 0.04 with Matt Ryan. So I think that's encouraging. We've also seen New England really struggle with rushing quarterbacks. Justin Fields skewered them. Uh, they've had some games against Lamar Jackson where they've done really well. Now, Ellinger is not as fast as those guys, so that could be a bit different, but Ellinger did run a lot in college. He ran six times in his debut. He's not fast, so maybe that's a difference because like, you look at New England's defense, the, the lack of speed is kind of the main thing that sticks out, so maybe having Ellinger be a runner but not a burner could change that math a bit, but he is a skilled runner. I think he can do well here. So I'm fine taking the Colts plus five and a half. There is value in the money line as well. But if I can navigate my way around Bill Belichick by taking uh, the spread versus the money line, I will do that. So I'll take the Colts plus five and a half in this one here, taking advantage of, you know, potentially underreaction to Ellinger looking okay in his debut and potentially because of the, the matchup mismatch with a running quarterback facing off against New England. What I'm not betting right now, but may later on is Cincinnati. They are seven and a half point favorites against the Panthers right now. That is down from eight and a half before last night's game. And I think it it's more likely to move towards the Panthers than towards the Bengals. It might not cross seven, but it's minus 115 on the uh, Bengals uh, minus seven and a half right now. I think we can at least get that to come down. I think if it's going to move, it'll move that direction. So that might move. We also could get a better money line here on the Bengals side, even taking out Jamar Chase and punishing them quite a bit for how they played last night in the first game without him. I had the Bengals favored by 9.5 points here. So I could bet it now based on the value gap between my numbers, what my uh, between what my model says and what the market is saying. I could bet that now, but I think if it's going to move, it's probably going to move towards Carolina. I'm likely to add it later on this week. I kind of want to get a feel for the market first, but I want to see where that goes. So basically what I'll be doing is just watching uh, what the hold is on that. Uh, the Bengals minus seven and a half. It stayed pretty steady at, at uh, minus 115 right now. So maybe it doesn't move towards Carolina, but 
you know, PJ Walker enthusiasm, DJ Moore enthusiasm, uh, pessimism around the Bengals. I think we might get a better number. So holding off for right now, but very likely to add that one later on this week. The one spot where I'm showing value, but not betting it is on the Jets. And this is, I think, just kind of a, a key overall discussion because my numbers say the Jets should be 8.05 point underdogs in this game, whereas the spread is 2.5. And typically you get four points uh, in your favor, you're going to take that. But when you're betting a spread, you're not betting based on the average. You're betting based on the median, the median expectation. And is the median expectation that the Jets will cover 12 and a half, you know, 53 percent of the time or whatever? When I back test my model, uh, teams that are around this area, they cover that range about 12 point, uh, about uh, 48 percent of the time. So. 12 and a half points, a team similar to the Jets mismatch against the Bills, they cover a 12 and a half point spread about 48% of the time. It's because when you fall behind, things can get out of hand very easily. You're in a negative game script that can lead to really big losses. You're in desperation mode for longer. And I don't want to deal with that. So just because my numbers say the spread should be tighter doesn't mean I want to bet that. Now, you'll remember that I talked about the, the Packers plus 10 and a half last week on this show, and this is a very similar situation where they could fall behind. I had more confidence in the Packers passing offense, should they fall behind, being able to claw their way back and cover that number than I do in the Jets passing offense. So that's the key difference in those two ones, and also is a 7.2 point uh, spread by my numbers to that one. It's a little bit different there, different passing offenses. That's why... I'm going to pass on this one, and it's a different situation than last week. And the Packers did cover, too, uh, coming from behind to get that backdoor cover. That was part of the thesis there. I'm going to pass on this one here with the Jets, despite showing value uh, for the reasons listed above. So to recap, where I'm showing value this week, I got the Jags plus 106, Falcons plus 140, and the Colts plus 5.5 on the spread. I'm okay taking all those. I'm going to wait and see on the Bengals against Carolina because I think I can get a better number uh, potentially later on this week, but we'll hold off on that one to see where stuff goes as the week goes along, but keeping an eye on that one for sure and likely to add it later on, and I will not be adding the Jets in any fashion against the Bills for this week. That wraps up our NFL week number nine first look. As I said, that we'll circle back to week number nine on Thursday with Ryan Williams to break down that and also talk some player props with J.J. Zacharyson. Let's dive now, though, into World Series game number three, because game three got postponed last night, and we can actually talk about it here on the show because Tuesdays are more of a freeform kind of show. And I actually am showing value here on the Astros' money line. That's minus 126 at FanDuel. You can get some slightly better numbers elsewhere. My model puts the Astros' win odds at 58.3%. Their implied odds, if you take the minus 126, are 55.8%. So, about two and a half percentage points of value there, and I'm very fine taking that. Ranger Suarez facing the Astros, and he's a lefty. That's a very tough assignment because the active roster for the Astros had a 132 WRC plus against lefties during the regular season. That's very good, and it's tough for Suarez. On the opposing side, you have Lance McCullers. He's looked really crisp in the postseason. I think that the, the fun thing for me with McCullers is that he is using his slider a lot, but he's also not walking guys. If you can get that combination out of Lance McCullers, good things are probably going to happen. That's pretty tough to top. So Astros minus 126 on the money line here. I think that's a really good number, and I'm willing to take that. So I will take the Astros minus 126 for game number three. Now, we do, as of now, know the starters for game four as well. Let's just talk quickly about that uh, for when markets open post game three. My preliminary numbers view this game as being a toss-up in Game 4. That's assuming the starters remain Aaron Nola and Christian Javier. I've got the Phillies of 50.7% to win that game, assuming nothing else changes too much. Now, you can use that number as a baseline. You'll have to tweak things around because big shifts can happen. If one team has an injury or has to burn through a, lot, a bunch of relievers for tonight, that could change. But as of right now, I've got 50.7% for the Phillies in Game 4, 58 uh, six or 58.3% for the Astros in game number three. So use those as kind of your baseline to decide whether there is value there. If you can get, I mean, if the Astros wind up being like underdogs for game four, based on narrative, based on the NOLA matchup and stuff like that, then maybe you buy into the Astros for both games. But for right now, we'll take the Astros for game three and see where things settle out in game number four. Okay, let's now move into the recap portion of this podcast and go back through last week's show on the college football side of things. 
We had Austin Swain of Numberfire on. Check out Austin on Twitter at aswain3. Find his work over at numberfire.com. And Austin cleaned up this week. He nailed TCU West Virginia. He had TCU minus seven and a half, over 68 and a half. Uh, did get a little lucky in getting uh, both those because um, he was, we were talking to him about that this morning. And uh, TCU won by 10, total finished 72. Neither of those would have hit had TCU not scored a late touchdown when they didn't really need it. Uh, try, kind of trying to burn clock, but I mean, it was a three point game. You can kind of understand why they were still pushing there. So it wasn't like a total, total nonsense touchdown. They were only up by three points, uh, but you know, it still works. So uh, TCU winning by 10, getting the cover, getting the over hero ball stuff there to get Austin bolt the wins there. He also had Washington state plus seven. They were facing Utah. They lost that game by four. So they covered in that one. Finally, we had Austin and Ed going head to head on Kentucky versus Tennessee. Austin had Tennessee minus 12 and a half. Ed had Kentucky and Austin also had the under at 62 and a half. Ed, did get the closing line value second time that's happened this year because it closed 11 and a half and uh second time he's gone head to head against a guest on the show got the clv but the other side won closed 11 and a half austin won both those uh he won the uh total as that game went i think under 50 almost or pretty close to it uh did not get 62 and a half for sure and they won that game running away so austin four and oh on the week here on the show, actually five and oh, sorry, I forgot he had uh, two totals and two spreads or two totals and three spreads. So five and a week for Austin. Again, check him out on Twitter at ace Wayne three and find his college football betting work over at numberfire.com. He does betting guides for like the, the one-off slates, like a Tuesday or a Thursday or a Friday. So check out Austin's work at number fire. Give him a follow on Twitter uh, at ace Wayne three as well. For player props, we had J.J. Zacharyson on, as always. He went two for three on the yardage props. The hits were David Montgomery over seven and a half receiving yards, which he hit like two minutes into the game. A.J. Brown over 66 and a half receiving yards, which he hit like two minutes into the game. So both those hit pretty quickly. The one miss was Robert Tunyon uh, under 32 and a half receiving yards. He finished with 35. Uh, so pretty tight miss there, but. Good week on the the yardage props for JJ finished two and three or two and one. Uh, the touchdown props were Cortland Sutton plus two twenty anytime, and then Justin Fields under uh, under point five passing touchdowns at plus one forty five. Neither of those hit, but good call on the yardage props for JJ. He talked about unders on the Jets backfield, given they might be a committee with Ty Johnson working in. None of those guys did anything, unless you went with a Michael Carter receiving yardage prop. Um, he mentioned Tony Pollard uh, as being a you know some guy to buy high on uh, in the betting markets. That worked out pretty well. So good week overall by JJ, um, even with the tightness there on the Tunyon under 32 and a half. Ryan Williams, uh, check him out on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Went four and four on spread bets this week, but also did really well with props last night. He had Tyler Boyd and Amari Cooper anytime touchdowns. Those were plus 145 and plus 170, respectively. Both those hit. So good job by Ryan there. He also had Donovan Peoples-Jones over 43 and a half receiving yards. He finished with 81. He had a super long catch right away. So uh, no hit for Joe Burrow, uh, 250 yards and two touchdowns, uh, plus the Bengals spread and the Tyler Boyd over 60 and a half receiving yards. But another overall really good week from Ryan. Check out him on Twitter at Ryan Alexander underscore W. Also forgot to mention JJ is on Twitter at late round QB uh, late round.com is where you can find his work and the late round fantasy football podcast. I had a super frustrating week because I had three bets and then one prop last night, the prop did hit. That was Amari Cooper over 52 and a half receiving yards. He finished with 131. So that was good. I was one and two in the other bets. Uh, the win was the Packers plus 10 and a half. They lost by 10. So covered Uh it counts. Good teams win. Great teams cover. Packers play great. So I'm gonna, uh, by my estimation, the other two were money lines, the Bucks and the Bengals. Both those were about as frustrating as you could possibly get because the Bucks were plus 102. When we discussed it on Tuesday. They closed at minus 126 on Thursday night. So awesome closing line value. You will take that every single time. And obviously they lost. So that was a bummer. Uh, didn't feel like a good omen for the rest of the week. Then the Bengals were minus 180 when we spoke. They were down to one, minus 196 at one point, and then the Jamar Chase injury got announced. I still had their win odds around, I think, like 65 or so percent post-Chase injury. So it's not like it was something that negated all the value that I had. But you, you know, you kind of get that like sick feeling. You're like, Oh man, like, even though I'm still thinking this is like, like the odds say this is an okay bet. You don't feel good about it. 
I had that feeling uh, once that Jamar Chase injury was announced. They're like, okay, here we go. It's going to be frustrating Monday night, and it is exactly that way. So I think the process for both the Bucks and the Bengals was correct, but not the right results. And that's happened a lot this year. It is frustrating, but it happens. Um, so, you know, it's just annoying with the way that went. But I think that with the way the numbers are moving, I feel good about those bets long term. Closing line value should translate to wins. So I still feel okay about it, but definitely uh, not the results I wanted overall. But a good week for the show uh, with the Austin sweep. Good weeks for, for Ryan and JJ and Ed, uh, for Ryan and JJ doing well on their bets as well. So hopefully a profitable week for you if you're listening to the podcast here on Covering the Spread. More to come throughout this week. As I mentioned, we're back tomorrow talking about college football week number 10 with Ed Fang. We'll get his breakdown of those numbers there. I'll have Ryan Williams back on on uh, Thursday to break down NFL week nine in full. We'll have JJ on on Friday to break down player props for this week as well. So don't forget to subscribe to Covering the Spread wherever you get your podcasts and also subscribe to the FanDuel YouTube page. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. You can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. Big thank you to everyone for tuning in for today. Good luck if you decide to bet on the Astros week uh, for game number three. If you're a Phillies fan, Astros fan, etc., just enjoy the game. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow for some more college football discussion. This has been covering the spread right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network. 